my initial four test logs survived the high tide. Got another five ready. Probably another 10 or 15 on the beach. Getting there. What I've done is I've marked five boot lengths down this line here. Marked the middle, same thing there. So it's gonna be a little smaller than I want it to be, but I already carried all those logs out. It's a fair bit of work, and I'd rather have a functioning concept of this thing than something that's actually six feet round. This is a pretty good piece. It's nice and rounded and everything, but at the bottom, it tapers off and it wasn't very long. So it's just in there a little short ways. So the next piece, I'm gonna use one of my really long pieces. There'll be a bit of a gap at the bottom, but I can fill that with a smaller stick later. Got my little entrance hole here. And basically what I'm doing is I'm trying to seal this thing up from the inside. Because all this sand, once it gets water up here, it's just gonna try to go out through all these little holes, waves are gonna be coming in. So what I'm doing is I'm sort of like, uh, just adding little pieces of wood and bark in between. And then I've got some seaweed that was washed up on the beach. And I'm kind of just push, pushing up the seaweed like this and then leaning sand up against it. Um, and just as I'm going along doing that, layer by layer, trying to make sure that there's a proper layer of seaweed holding everything. And wherever there's a larger gap, try to put a little twig behind so that the seaweed doesn't just like break. And I'm slowly gonna work around building this thing up. Still haven't figured out how I'm gonna keep getting in and out of the thing once I close this up, because I'm obviously gonna have to put some sticks here at some point. So cross that bridge when we get to it. We have some of the lowest tides that you'll ever see right now. And these tide pools just go out forever. All sorts of really cool marine life in there. I'll have to go check out later. But what I'm here for is way up there. It's kind of crazy how high the water comes. I've got my little island and I'm trying to find these little washed up pieces of kelp and seaweed. Anything that looks like I can stuff it in all the little cracks in order to have the sand not just get washed out with the waves. I'm actually starting to think this might work. Like I want it to work and this is like a proof of concept. Will it work? Do you think this thing's gonna survive high tide? Is it possible? Is it gonna fall apart? Is the sand just gonna come out? Or will I actually be able to stand there at high tide today dry? Make a comment below. Comments are good for the algorithm. They help my channel out. So give your prediction now. Will this thing work? All right, it's actually swallowing a lot of sand. It's only just starting here, but there's your inside. So far, as far as the sand is up, I've got it packed full of seaweed and little sticks and twigs. Tide's coming in. And when it starts coming in, it comes in quick. A lot of work to do. And last one. That's a lot. You... Yeah. We're gonna do the last round here. Okay, all the way around and then stop at that spot. Okay, stop here. There, Kyle? It's not six feet across. And now, Bob, I'm gonna get you to point the camera at me. Right there. So what I do, is we'll take this end, so I don't have scissors. You get her tight. And we wrap around this a few times. And that's our little snap. And then just tie it up. Hop on in. Seems to be fairly well held. Thank you very much for my seaweed caulking here. And then I hop in, take a knee and basically just pack it all in these edges and then push the sand out and then I'll shovel more in. And then that tide, oh, it's coming in quick. So I've got quite a hole here where I'm standing, um, all the way down to my feet and all the way up to these edges like this. Basically everything's stuffed with seaweed or little sticks. And I think it's just time to fill it up with a big mound of sand. I still want to get the sand right up to the top here. So there's lots of digging. And out here. You have expensive toys being fully used. And I have to somehow figure out how to get out of this thing. 
Yeah. Yeah. All right. Now those guys stole my shovel. Going on a shovel stealing mission. Got it. So this is my attempt to weave some rope out of all this twine. So I just laid four strands down along the beach here and then we're just putting it all together and when I get to the end I'll twist it all up and then wrap it like that hoping it's less likely that way that a single strand just snaps on me. It's wound I think tight enough that if a single strand breaks the whole thing won't go and now I'm going to wrap this around the tower. I've got this four strand twine here and then I'm basically wrapping it around itself and sort of the theory here is that if it's wrapped tight enough if a single strand breaks the tension between all the strands will keep it from just unraveling and so I'm putting a little bit of tension on it as I go around and this top strand is gonna probably take the breadth of the force um, but it should be like a little more durable like rope than just twine but basically just until I run out I'm gonna keep wrapping it and feeding it around and then it's time to get some more sand in here as that tide is approaching rather quickly. So that is a pretty solid little wrap of twine, whether it's sisal or sisal, probably saying it wrong. But uh, I would say that this should hold for as long as this twine doesn't like rot away. But I did want to use some biodegradable stuff since, you know, on the beach uh yeah that's that's looking good and there's a decent amount of sand in there i'm going to try to shovel in as much more as i can get just to secure all this seaweed i've got what's left in that bucket and there's my tide platforms already in the water so it's gonna be tight but if i really shovel hard i might get the sand up to a level that does not get wet and I'm basically just supplying sand so that these guys, my child laborers, can pack the seaweed into the gaps and stack the sand up, get this thing going higher and higher. It's actually starting to look like it might survive high tide. It looks like we're gonna have sand up to the top. The seaweed's almost up to the top. And it looks like after dinner break, I'm probably going to take the dinghy out here, oh, and it might still be here high and dry. I moved it for you! It'd be sweet. It's also good gold mining training, apparently. I'm just about out of sand to be shoveled. Looks like Bob has his jacket on, and his life jacket. I don't know if his parents actually know he's here, but uh, Uncle Kyle was a bad uncle and suggested that he do this and I promised I would come pick him up in the dinghy later. So when his parents see he's out in an island in the middle of nowhere, yeah, I'm to blame. Help! Hey! Yeah! Remember, you gotta stay dry if you're gonna stay warm up there. So, Liz and Ryan don't know about this? Uh, I don't think Liz and Ryan know about this. I suggested it to Bob and he immediately took the opportunity to get his jacket and life jacket. So, yeah, it looks like I'm going to have to take my shoes off to walk you in at this point. YouTubers will do anything for a thrill for the audience, won't you? That's right. Things I do for you. Go to extreme lengths. <laughs> All right. I got to get the last few shovels of sand in while I still can. I'll grab the ladder and my shovel, and uh, I'll be rolling up the pant legs there, because this entire thing is full. Oh, no, I can run down there still real quick. Okay, Bob. While I have the final opportunity to get off the beach without taking my nice dry shoes off, you're out here on your own. All right, you got a jacket so you'll be warm? You're ready to go? Okay, I'm heading in and we'll be back with a dinghy to pick you up and rescue you. All right, bud. Oh no, 
Look at that, it's closing. It's closing. This was my escape. I'll never make it alive. Uh-oh, uh-oh, oh gosh. All right, uh, we're doing this. Without a hurry. Oh no, oh no, the ladder's about to get wet. My shoes are about to get wet. Oh dear, how are we gonna do this? Think we're gonna make it. We gotta be quick. We're almost there. Should've rolled my pants up because they got a little wet. That's all right. And we'll see what Bob's parents say about the fact that he's trapped out there. And the final possible rescuer hiking into shore. And the six-year-old by himself, the final survivor. Bum bum bum. Time of his life. Oh, Bob. I really hope that thing stays afloat. I don't know if he's thinking about coming in or if he's just hanging out down there saying hi to the ocean. The parents did in fact not know about this plan. Bad Uncle Kyle. Bad. So you going to get him? Well, I'm doing? just watching him dangle from a stick right now and stare down at the river or at the ocean. And now he's getting back onto the platform. Mm, like Kyle. So he's entertaining he's himself, nice. essentially. Maybe you should just take him some food oh, and water and let him stay there over there. I think so long as the actual thing stays together, Bob will also be okay. On the other hand, if you store Water's probably like a foot right, deep right now. You start... So he's out there, hooting and hollering. And what do we have? What, a makeshift rescue operation, perhaps? Bad Uncle Kyle may not need to save him after all. See, part of me thinks that I should just go out and, you know, he's probably bored and wants to come in. But really, I just want to test the engineering of my structure and see if it, like, will help a six-year-old survive. What are you thinking, Rolf? I'm thinking that's one of the best adventures a little kid could have. Look at him jumping in and out of that thing, waving to his friends, having a good time. So I did ask if I should bring him a resupply, and uh, his mother's much more wise than bad Uncle Kyle, and she says I should probably just bring him in for dinner. So we're gonna go for a rescue. All right, Bob, I'm coming to rescue you. We're filming the rescue from the paddleboard. All right, Bob is getting rescued. Excellent job on the rescue. Safely getting to shore. So how was your time out on the island, Bob? It was good? Are you excited for dinner now that you've survived out the high tide? Have a good time out there, Bob? Nice, buddy. Nice. Well, I think for now, I'm going to head in, and then when the tide gets really deep, I'll head back out and inspect the island. I swam out there and uh, checked out the platform. It's got a nice, nice bit of a deck on it that my brother put on today while I was building that little island. The island is wet inside, but the sand is pretty much at water level. It's like a couple inches below water level. So all the waves are coming through the gaps at the top, and they've kind of washed out maybe... I don't know, like eight inches to a foot of sand, but the rest is still completely full of sand in there. Pretty cold today for mid-July, but the wetsuit that I got in San Diego when I was 25, so I guess 11 years ago, uh, it's a 4.3 XL and it's perfect for this. Lots of shoulder mobility because it's a surfing wetsuit, so it's great to get some laps in and sort of swim for fitness, which is Good for my body, loosens up the lower back and the shoulders after all that desk work and uh, digging work. Check in tomorrow and show you what happened after two high tides over the night. 
what is left the next morning. Two high tides overnight. My dad went out and collected some more seaweed over there. You can see there's a decent amount of sand in here still. If we look at the height, sand level is right around here. And I think what happened was any time, like sort of up top where the waves were, if a wave came over the seaweed, it would push the seaweed in, and then you'd get that sort of, you know, wave action slowly pulling sand down and, and loosening the seaweed lower and lower and lower. So it's a little bit loose fitting of a barrel to be bomb proof to the sand, but like if some kids later on in the summer wanted to come along, they could put little rocks from the gravel bar over there and just sort of fill it up with seaweed and pebbles and sticks. And it wouldn't be too hard to fill this thing right back up again, I don't think. So is it a camping overnight island? No, well, a little small for that, but it's a good test concept. It needs to be tighter to keep the sand in, but it did work and it's still here. And it'll probably be a uh, interesting little beach decoration for many weeks to come. And check out this build in another video, which I'll link to at the end of this. Here stands a monument to what was once here just two days ago, the majestic Sand Island. Thanks for watching everyone, we'll catch you on the next one.